It's time now for County Wide, a special presentation of Yavapai Broadcasting News. Join Paul David and Brad Miller as they talk with our community's leaders, newsmakers, and people in the know. You'll hear about the hot topics that affect all our lives here in Yavapai County. And now, here's today's County Wide. Brad Miller with you, and happy to welcome back into studio today, uh, Superintendent of the Cottonwood Oak Creek School District, Barbara Yaren. Hello. Thank you again. How nice to you? be back. I'm well, thank you. Always good to chat with you. We'll talk about a number of things today, but you brought a guest today. I did. Barb Daher is a counselor with the, the school district. We say hello, hello to you, too. Hello. Good to have you uh, both here today. We're going to talk about the Safe School Ambassador Program, uh, bullying. Um, it's an issue has been as long as I think there have been schools and young people and uh, some of the choices that uh, they make and are forced to make. And uh, we'll talk about that uh, really is the brunt of our uh, program today. But since I've got you here, <laughs> getting uh, kicked around uh, once again, the idea of uh, with uh, with your district and, and Mingus uh, Union High School District, the idea of shared services, mm -hmm. um, that's up again. And, and, and there's been some shared services in the past, but it sounds like there's at least an investigation, is that the right word? Absolutely. Amongst the school Absolutely. districts and boards mm -hmm. to look at maybe really making that a, a, a kind of a more permanent union, if That's you will. Correct. Is I think that what's happening? It is. Both boards have a strong interest in working together, <clears throat> knowing that it's best for the kids and best for the community. And some of the areas that we've talked about in the past is when we had the opportunities of possibly one of our staff people moving on to a different position, utilizing that open door as um, bringing some departments together and we've had that conversation not only with Mingus but with other Verde Valley superintendents so we've been doing quite a bit of work on this and we're anxious for the conversations the two boards are going to meet in January right. and we're going to be looking at some things like facilities our facilities our grounds and possibly even transportation again okay so we're excited about those things we know that the two districts are neighbors good neighbors we want to increase uh, the usage of those shared services and even look at professional development for our teachers, particularly our middle school and high school teachers, how we can bring those together. Um, so quite a few things on our radar uh, to have conversations about and looking forward to those times. As they say in the news business, stay tuned. Stay tuned There's going to be a lot more as <laughs> the boards. Uh, it's a process and a procedure. And yes. if and when it comes time for this to really, uh, there's going to be a lot of information out there. And there certainly the public will weigh in on, on, on their feelings because there'll be strong feelings, I'm sure, on either side uh, of how and exactly what ends up being proposed. But the board's working on it, superintendents and the district's working on that as well. So we'll talk more about that, I'm Great. sure. Great. Look forward to in, it. In 2012. Uh, let's talk about the Safe School Ambassador Program. And Barbara, this is, uh, it's about bullying. It is. And, and those kinds of things that young people face, right? Um, yes. Let me talk just a little bit about that. What we started with, with our schools, we're always trying to create a better environment for our students to come and learn in. And when kids feel safe in their schools, they're going to be learning. Right. Um, our governing board is a visionary board and is always interested in finding ways that best enhance the learning environment for kids. Uh, the National School Board Association Conference, uh, one of the ones that they attended, uh, a number of the board members attended some trainings in the Safe School Ambassador, some presentations, and were very impressed by the research that was behind this program and uh, the turnaround that a lot of schools were having. And that was not to say that the schools were in dire straits, but what happened is they helped create an even better environment for kids where they felt included in their schools and um, were able to participate more fully in their education and the social aspects of school. So the governing board um, directed administration to look into the program and bring that program into right. our district. And I had the uh, wonderful opportunity to have a super counselor, Barb Daher, and put her in, you know, I knew this would be right up her alley, and I said, help lead this up. And she's done an outstanding job on that, and she can Thank answer you. a lot of the questions that you might have about safe uh, And, and let's do that. First, let, let's kind of identify, I think, when we say bullying, I think most uh, of our <laughs> listeners and viewers will have an idea of what that means on the school level. Most of us have been on one side or the other of that, and sometimes both. Sure. Um, today, it's... You know, it's different given the electronic, mm -hmm. Facebook, texting, you know, all of those kinds of things, right. Barb. Is that right? It kind of adds a whole new 
realm to, to how kids can kind of get at each other. Sure, and, and basically bullying is just one form of mistreatment. And the program identifies, has the students that are, are the um, identified ambassadors, it has them be able to see a situation and know how to act in a situation to de-escalate that situation. Okay. And it could be bullying, it could be put downs, it could be um, vandalism, it could be anything that affects their learning environment, their school climate. And so if it happens to be an act of something that even happens outside of school, something with um, you know cyberbullying, texting, it will still carry over to the school day and the students are trained um, in specific ways how to handle that and de-escalate situations and build up students who might be maybe targets uh, to to those acts of violence, emotional or physical. Okay, when we say identify, sure. uh, that is, that's your job, that's your role, or how, how are, are these ambassadors oh, sure. identified to begin with? How do, you, do they volunteer to be part of this? Well, they, they, they have to agree to it. They have to want to be part of this. But they are identified by their peers or their teachers or adult staff as uh, socially influential students. That means they carry a lot of clout with their peers. Um, they might not be straight A students. They might be. Uh, they might not be star of the basketball team. They might, they might just be very heavy, heavy influences in their environment. And they're empowered because they're given the skills to be able to use that influence in a very positive way. Now it's a discrete program. They don't run around and say, oh, this is happening and this is happening and oh, I'm gonna go tell. Right. It's absolutely a discrete program. And what it does is it empowers it bystanders. It actually, these students are usually bystanders. They're not the bully mm -hmm. and they're usually not the target. They're not, they're not actually identified as that in, the, in, the, in these situations. They're, they're standing by and watching. And what they've done in the past is just watch and just ignore. Right. And now what they'll do is, is they'll act. And maybe not because of apathy, mm -hmm. but because they don't know what or how. And that's what to, they... And is that what we're trying true. to get at? They're, they're not... They're, yes, that's absolutely true. They are not... Students are not geared into noticing other people's mistreatment. Right. They, they just, they ignore it. If it's not directly happening to them, they, it's just another part of their school day. Once, once they're trained how to spot things that are going on, just discreetly, they're able to act and then they're able to follow up. And those two things are what is those two things are the keys to being able to change that, that social climate at school. <clears throat> okay, you, the, the two things you said, act and follow up. Mm -hmm. Act how? What would be a typical? I know every case is different. Sure, there's what several What would be ways. a typical response that one of these these ambassadors you know, would? One of the skills that they were talking about mm -hmm. was the put downs. Sure. And how does the child react to a put down? Mm -hmm. You want to share a little sure. bit? Sure. Um, there's a technique called balancing, and when there is a situation <coughs> where a student is being put down, um, just in, in any in any kind of situation in the lunchroom or in the classroom or, or in the hallway. Uh, there's something a, a bystander or an ambassador can do a put up in which they would actually work with the target of that specific abuse. There's also, when, there's also um, you can balance in another way where you could actually work with the aggressor and just say, oh, why do you, uh, they're, they're pretty nice, I saw them, you know, the other, and then, and maybe even distract. Let's right. go shoot some baskets, let's go. Right. And right there, it might not have solved the entire idea of right. kids being mistreated, but it's de-escalated a situation that could have been worse. And that's basically the, the draw of the program, is it fixes a situation, it handles it, before it gets up here. It's interesting. This is a new, I mean, well, that's why we're talking today. It's something of a new approach. Mm -hmm. um, I, it's interesting to me, Barbara, that it's, a, it's kind of a direct, um, I don't want to say interference, but it's kind of, that's what's happening, is these ambassadors will kind of run interference, if you it will, mm -hmm. in that they're going to inject themselves into the conflict. It's not just a, I'm going to run and tell, it's and we don't want to say that that's the wrong thing to do either. Mm -hmm. uh, but that, this is what seems to be the and most different thing about this approach. You've touched a couple of points. One mm -hmm. of the things, run and tell. There is a time right. when sure. they're trained yes, to run are. and tell. Right. Um, but you know, Barb talked a little bit about observing, and we don't always observe, or kids don't. It's not just kids. It was interesting because I attended the training um, that we had for the children. It was a two-day training. We'll talk a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. and and uh, 
I was in the lunchroom of the middle school just this last week, and kids were all coming in, kids were eating, and one, you know, little group walked by, and one of the kids that was sitting down said something. And I started to walk on, and I thought, now, wait a minute. I think I just heard a yeah. put down. Yeah. And I didn't pay attention to that possibly before. So I tried to use that technique of kind of that balancing. So I came back with a comment, oh, that I knew that girl and I did know that girl. And you know, she was really great when she did this or this. So I balanced that right. with the child and kind of, again, in a sense, a de escalate that you know, mm -hmm. took their attention. They're going, oh my gosh, who's she? <laughs> what's she saying? Right. But it was interesting that even I, became a little bit more aware of what was going on um, after this training. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about how we continue, once the kids were trained, what we do now to continue that work with our children okay. as well. We do have to take a break. Uh, we'll come back in just a moment. Plenty more good conversation on this uh, uh, on this issue, bullying. It, it's, it's, it's always going to be a problem. Young people are going to be young people, and uh, it's just going to continue. But there's some interesting ways to, uh, to address that. Uh, we'll be back right after this with Countywide. Looking for a new pet that your family will cherish every day? Consider adopting from a shelter. Shelters are the best places to find a new pet. That's where you'll discover healthy, loyal, and loving animals eager to become a part of your family. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. So bring home your new buddy today. To find out more, visit the shelterpetproject.org. Hey, honey. Hi, buddy. Honey? I think he's been smoking pot. Call 911. It's okay, Joey. I'm here. Can you hear me, son? I'm right here. Are you Is he me? breathing? He's not Are responsive. You? Hello? <sighs> honey, give me steak knife and a ballpoint pen. What are you now, doing? step. I'm going to do mouth to mouth. No. <clears throat> you know lots of ways to help your child, but do you know what to do if they're using drugs? The partnership at drugfree.org can help. foods to the right temperature using a food thermometer. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Hi, I'm Captain Larry Dawson with the Cottonwood Fire Department, here to talk to you about cooking safety in your home. When cooking with oil, make sure you have the proper size lid and an oven mitt nearby. If the oil does catch fire, cover the pan with the lid while wearing an oven mitt. Turn off the burner. Never throw water or baking soda on a grease fire. Never leave an open flame unattended and always have a working fire extinguisher nearby. Welcome back to the program. It is County Wide. Brad Miller with you uh, in our studios today with the Cottonwood Oak Creek School District Superintendent uh, Barbara Uren is here and Bob da uh, Barb Daher, counselor uh, with the district, talking about the Safe School Ambassador Program. Fascinating uh, what we've chatted about. Uh, Barb, tell me a little bit about the, the training uh, that you, we kind of referred to in the first sure. segment. Well, the training was composed of several parts. The first part of the training was to um, just have the students be familiar with what mistreatment, what acts of mistreatment, what, what actually is mistreatment. Right. Because we always hear the term bullying, which is a very serious problem right now, and that's really the hot topic in education because of there's the, the violence that's occurred in schools because of people being on the, the wrong side of the, being bullied. <coughs> Um, the training was basically to show what types of mistreatment there were, to identify students that have been mistreated, like how they've been mistreated and how they have mistreated others. Then the other part of the training was to teach the skills as to how to de-escalate a potentially um, violent situation or a, a situation of mistreatment. Right. So. And, it, and, it, and it seems like that 
to me is, is the biggest leap of all. Mm -hmm. um, getting these young people to kind of intervene when they see something now, in the moment, uh, to kind of intervene in that. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's very subtle, a taunt or something like that, or does it include if there's maybe even, uh, say, an act of violence mm -hmm. if, or a threat of such? Mm -hmm. Is all of that part of the training? Yes. And at what point is it I got to run and tell I, this has to go up the ladder. Well, and and how and how we sh how we demonstrated that with the students is we we put a bank of different potential situations, okay. and we actually like in a in some sort of a, a pool, and then we were able to act those situations out, and then we were also able to come up with what how to intervene, and when do you get an adult? Okay. And so the students are very comfortable with what the, how they need to act. Through the year, we meet every other week and we discuss situations that have happened. And we reflect on, did we do the right thing? Was that, was that or, or when they didn't act, they said, maybe I should have acted then. Right. And so these learning processes go on through the year. And called families. Called, yes, family groups is what they're called. And there are um, specific adults on campus that run those family groups. And we meet and discuss successes and challenges all year. So we can, are continually growing. It seems, Barbara, that this program, if successful, and it certainly, certainly sounds like it started that way, is really going to build kind of a culture within a school student population. That's correct. Over That's correct. years. We're training both our Oak Creek kids and our Cottonwood Middle School kids to start with. Uh, the program, our hope is that we there is a program that is built with Safe Schools Ambassadors that goes down to the elementary level. Well, I was going to ask so the we'll, age range. That's of the kids. right. So okay. we'll be looking at that once we get this embedded and really going. For now, we're what? Six through Six, eighth seven, grade. Okay. Uh -huh. And one of the things when you talk about that culture, uh, the trainer did a great analogy, at least I caught it, and I, it made sense to me. And her analogy was that you're driving down the road. She put the kids and she said, okay, you're driving down the highway with your parents. How fast are you going with your parents? And they, what's the speed limit? Uh, 65. How fast are you going? 70. <laughs> How fast is everybody else going? 70. Well, what happens when somebody goes zooming by you at 90? Oh, you don't do that. That's unacceptable. Well, what she was saying is we've developed a norm right. of what's acceptable. Right. And so it may be a little bit over what the quote, quote, legal limit is, right. but that has become our norm. Kids have the ability to determine what is their norm at their school. What are they going to accept and mm -hmm. where does that cross the line and it's no longer acceptable. Right. Mm -hmm. And sometimes our norms have maybe gotten askewed of what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. So this program helps them gain that control of this is what we want our school to be, this is what our norm is of this school, and when you're outside of that norm, that's not acceptable anymore. So it was a great analogy to take back in how we look at creating that culture. Barb, you told us something, you told me something during the break I'd like you to share with the sure. audience about how these young, these ambassadors, this, this kind mm -hmm. of first crop of trainees yes. was, was called. You nominated them mm -hmm. and asked right. if they wanted to become part. How many in the, the crowd there said that, yeah, we want to continue and be part of this program? Right, well, they were nominated and then I held an orientation and after I gave all the information that they needed to have to decide if they wanted to be part of the program or not, they every single one, everything, every single student did decide to participate in the program as an ambassador. And they were given a chance to drop out they after were. day one. They were, at, yes, they were they absolutely continued. given a chance to drop out. And they still, of course, are given the opportunity to, you know, right. where we say, is this working for you? And the students continue to say in their family group uh, meetings, it's working really well. And, and how many I'm kids? Learning. How many kids is that in that first? Forty. Kind of, Forty, 40 students. To me, that speaks volumes mm -hmm. of what the kids really do want. If they didn't care, mm -hmm. they wouldn't have been part of this in the first mm -hmm. place. And it just seems like if you've got 40 kids that are, as we said in the first segment, kind of looked up to, hold a certain position, mm -hmm. uh, it, it just seems like it's going to be a very, very strong thing. And for the ambassadors, it seems like just tremendous leadership building. It I mean, is. this is the kind of thing that's going to look good on a college resume. It is. Mm -hmm. It is. These kids that's are right. also going to have skills that will transfer over when they go to high school. Oh, so I, oh you better believe it. It's very exciting that they're really being given some great leadership skills uh, at a young age. An age-old problem in schools, bullying, and a, a very interesting way to address that, and it's at work at the Cottonwood Oak Creek School District. Mm -hmm. We'll take another break. It's Countywide. We'll be back right after this. Now, 
Meanwhile, some action from the courts. Billie Jean King renewing her rivalry with arthritis. First set, furious volley. And right to the net for a winner. Beautiful forehand there. Arthritis, stunned. And here, match point. Billie Jean with the ace, taking it in straight sets. Afterwards, a jubilant Billie Jean King. Tennis is a weapon for me with arthritis. There's nothing like it for me to hit a ball, run to the ball, any time, any court. I'm ready. Let's go. What's your weapon against arthritis? Find out at fightarthritispain.org. Packers. Viking. Packers. Viking. Packers. Viking. Red state. Blue state. Vegan. Carnivore. We come from different places. Uptown. Downtown. Optimist. Central. We come to different conclusions. Half empty. Half full. But when we live united, we create real, lasting change in the building blocks of life. The education, income, and health of our communities, <laughs> our families, united. even the person next to us. Live united. Real change won't happen without you. So give, advocate, volunteer. Live united. Sign up at liveunited.org. moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Hi, I'm Captain Larry Dawson with the Cottonwood Fire Department here to talk to you about cooking safety in your home. The number one cause of house fires today is lack of safety in the kitchen. Always set a timer while you're cooking. If a fire starts in your oven, close the door and turn the oven off. When kids are present while cooking, always use the back burners and keep handles turned in and out of reach of children. Never leave an open flame unattended and always have a working fire extinguisher nearby. Back to the program. It's Connie White with uh, Cottonwood School uh, School District uh, Superintendent Barbie Uren and Counselor Bob uh, Barb Daher. I keep calling you Bob. <laughs> so we're very <laughs> formal here. Sorry about that. Um, okay. This just seems like a terrific program, and I, I'm anxious to see how this goes. It's, it becomes further implemented. Um, but one thing, again, kind of chatting during the break, Barb, if you would share again. Sure. Um, we're not turning kids into tattletales. No. Tell me how you address that concern. Sure. Sure, and and this is this is a really big part of the program, and that is that the students are not, I the ambassadors are not identified by the other students in the school as snitches, tattletales. They're they're almost incognito, in in their social setting, and they do very um, discreet things to distract or to put up, and so they're not tattletaling, right. and they don't stand out as tattletales among their peers or adults. Uh, if there is a situation where an adult needs to be involved, they will do that. We have several methods where they can actually do it anonymously, or they can go to their family group leader, whom they trust at this point, okay. that we've, they've built a relationship with, or there's other named adults that they could go to where, and, and this would be really on a rare occasion, where right. there would be a dangerous situation, which, right. which they would have to get an adult. And it seems like that's... The, the the far end of the scale. Sure. It seems to me that this program Absolutely. is going to be most effective, Barbara, in those day to day. Correct. On the floor, in the lunchroom, in the gym, where whatever. It seems like that's where this is really going to be end, end up paying big dividends. Isn't that's it? correct. I see it as that creating the culture, the environment. Yeah. It's a great place to be for we, all kids. We've estimated that at to this at this point, they've the students, the ambassadors, have actually de-escalated approximately between 20 and 30 mistreat, mistreatment situations a day. Mm -hmm. Right there, the, the climate has improved. The norm has been set that this stops right here and we're moving on to something more positive. Right. So. Terrific. Uh, ladies, we, I, I'd like to talk more about this and perhaps we'll, we'll come back as it develops and, and, sure. and we get a, get some uh, time and experience under our belt with this program, but it sure sounds like a home run. Cottonwood Oak Creek School District Superintendent uh, Barbara Uren and Bob Daher, uh, <laughs> Counselor Barb, thank you both very, My very pleasure. much. It's County Wide and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Bob. This has been County Wide, a special presentation of Yavapai Broadcasting News. Listen in each Tuesday and Thursday as we tackle the hot topics and talk to the decision makers across Yavapai County. That's County Wide with Brad Miller and Paul David each Tuesday and Thursday on this Yavapai Broadcasting Station.